So you wanna buy a laptop to edit videos whenever and wherever inspiration strikes. But what laptop should you buy in 2024? If you stick around for the entire video, I'll give you some recommendations that might surprise you, including options as low as $500 all the way up to $7,000. In order for you to make an educated purchase though, I'd like to discuss the most important features to look for in a laptop so you get the speed, power, and portability that you need to make amazing videos without breaking the bank or your back. My name is Anthony Gallo. I run contentcritter.com where we teach you how to shoot, edit, and monetize professional videos. Let's go. Laptops are handy tools in the video editing workflow, especially if you do a lot of filming in the studio, on location, or on the road. The trouble is trying to understand all the technical jargon used to describe laptops, it's enough to make your eyes glaze over. The good news is you don't need a computer science degree to make sense of all of it. Let's just start with the basics, screen size and resolution. Manufacturers list laptops by screen size, not their actual width. Screen size refers to the distance between the two opposite corners of the screen and can range between 10 and 18 inches. To figure out whether your laptop will fit in your backpack or carry-on, you have to find these specific dimensions which are listed in the specs. While you're there, be sure to check out the laptop's weight. Smaller laptops may only weigh three pounds, but larger ones can be as heavy as a gallon of milk. I traveled a bunch in Europe last summer and I learned real quick that a five pound laptop in a backpack with camera gear gets real heavy real fast. Up next, we have screen resolution. You'll want at least full HD, which you'll see listed as FHD. The next step up in resolution is quad HD or 2K, which is two times the pixel density as full HD. And then you finally have 4K, which ups the ante again by a factor of two. Ideally, you'd want a screen with the highest resolution possible and 4K will be crystal clear. But like everything we discussed today, there are constant trade-offs. A bigger and higher resolution screen makes editing easier, but it will mean a much more expensive and heavier laptop. If you're not planning on connecting your laptop to an external monitor, you'll want a larger screen with ideally 4K resolution. If an external monitor is in your budget, it might make more sense to buy a mid-sized laptop that is easier to carry on the go and then spend the extra money you saved by going with the smaller laptop to get a high-end, high-resolution monitor. The monitor that I personally use is the 40-inch curved option from LG, which is currently on sale for $1,400. I personally love this monitor and will leave all of the relevant links to gear that we mentioned throughout this video in the description below. But no amount of screen resolution will make up for a slow or glitchy laptop. So let's get under the hood and talk about everyone's favorite topic, power, as in processing power. Let's face it, video editing is like feeding a hungry beast and not all video editing is the same. We have super basic edits that consist of cutting up 1080p footage and you know, piecing together different clips, but then you can up the ante and add multiple layers of high resolution videos like 4K files, complex graphics, animations, effects, 3D rendering, and high-end plugins. All things that are gonna require a significant amount of processing power if you want it to go smoothly. Now, the three primary components that contribute to a laptop's ability to edit video smoothly smoothly are the CPU, the GPU, and the RAM. Let's look at each one by one. The CPU or central processing unit is your laptop's brain. It's designed to perform general calculations for every application running on your laptop, not just video editing software. This could mean sending emails, Spotify, Photoshop, Netflix, you get the idea. Typically, the CPU is a component in your laptop that's made by a different company than the brand of the laptop that you're buying. The major brands that create CPUs are Intel, AMD, and Apple. They all make great CPUs, and you really can't go wrong choosing between any of these brands. What's more important is understanding how we evaluate CPUs. To make things simple, CPUs are made up of individual cores. So the power of your CPU is dependent on the total number of cores and the clock speed of each individual core, which which is measured in gigahertz. Think of it like a dog sled team where the dogs are the cores in the CPU, the more dogs the better, and then the clock speed is the rate at which each dog can run. It's not a perfect analogy, but it's close enough. So simply put, the more cores, the better, with six to eight cores being a good target for smooth video editing. You'll also wanna look for individual core clock speeds of 3.2 gigahertz or higher for smooth video editing performance. Usually when you're looking up specs of computers online, you'll see the core count and the clock speed combined on one line. Next on the list is the graphics processing unit or the GPU. The GPU is like a sous chef who focuses on specialized tasks related to graphics, such as rendering images in complex 2D and 3D graphics. Historically, Nvidia and AMD have dominated the market for GPUs, but as of late, Apple has made things interesting. That's because
because most laptop GPUs have always been standalone units separate from the CPU. These dedicated GPUs had their own memory space, known as VRAM, where they manage images and videos. If you're doing 4K editing, it's great to have a dedicated graphics card, which is another term for GPU, and you'll want six gigabytes or more of VRAM. It can get complex because there are so many different names for GPUs out there, but here you can see the GPU name and then the total amount of VRAM. That's the six gigabytes or more number that you wanna optimize for. So for a while, people have favored separate dedicated GPUs, claiming they provide more potential processing power and reduce the workload on the CPU. Apple has recently turned this theory on its head though with its latest M series chips that integrate the CPU and the GPU together on one single chip, which they call a system on a chip. Apple actually first did this in 2010 with the Apple A4 chip, the first system on a chip used for the first generation iPad, along with the iPhone 4 that came out at the same time. Meanwhile, with their computers, Apple used Intel chips for all of their MacBook Pro laptops until 2020, when they released the first M1 chip. They're now up to M3 chips because they've been out for a few years. These range from CPUs with eight to 16 cores and integrated GPUs with 10 to 40 cores. Not to be outdone, AMD, one of the CPU manufacturers we mentioned earlier, recently released its own Ryzen CPU with an integrated Radeon graphics card, essentially adapting the same system on a chip strategy that Apple made waves with. The logic Apple and AMD are using to justify integrating the CPU and the GPU together is that by putting the CPU and the GPU on the same chip, you'll get better performance and thermal efficiency. Think of it like being able to do your grocery shopping, clothes shopping, and furniture shopping all in one store rather than having to drive all over town to the separate stores. It's just more efficient and it translates into significantly less power required to perform actions on the laptop. Now, before I give you my opinion on all that, we can't forget to mention the last piece of the processing power puzzle, which is extremely important to video editing, RAM or random access memory. RAM is temporary storage that your laptop uses to access data quickly. It's like a virtual workbench where your laptop can assemble multiple files all at once and it's separate from the CPU GPU combo. This is one of the most important and also easiest specs to spot when you're out there looking at laptops. The general rule of thumb is you'll need ideally 16 gigabytes of RAM for video editing, 32 gigs if you are regularly working with 4K resolution video files, and even more than that if you plan on doing intense graphic work with your videos. The laptop that I use for video editing has 64 gigabytes of RAM just for reference. Now, it's not that video editing will be impossible for you if you don't buy enough RAM. For example, the eight gigabyte laptops from Apple can still edit video. They're just going to lag pretty hardcore if you start to get really complex with your edits. And unfortunately, at the end of the day, RAM is one of those things where no matter how much you get, you're always gonna wish you got more. Which brings us to the biggest factor in the whole Apple versus PC debate. In a lot of Windows-based laptops, you can add or upgrade RAM later on after purchasing, which is great. You can buy for your current budget and then upgrade and add more RAM to speed things up over time. Apple, on the other hand, makes it so you can't change the RAM or really any aspect of their laptops after you've purchased it. So you have to decide on your RAM and buy it all up front, which can get spendy real fast. For example, a brand new 16 inch MacBook Pro with eight terabytes of internal storage and 128 gigabytes of RAM will set you back a cool $7,000. You could get a new hot tub with that kind of money. Now that's an insanely expensive option that is an extreme level of overkill for the beginner editor looking to make nice videos. I'm not saying you have to spend that type of money. I'm just pointing out that that's a lot of money to spend on a computer where you can't modify it at all after purchasing. However, there is a silver lining here. The Apple M series chips are an extremely impressive development that give you more power and efficiency per spec and per unit of power draw for much less money than we would have ever had to traditionally spend in the past. And of all the practical applications that have experienced a boost from this new chip technology, video editing has likely benefited the most, which is why most big YouTubers, much bigger than myself, all use and recommend Apple computers to beginner creators, both MacBooks and Mac desktops. Now, speaking of beginner creators, if you're looking to learn how to shoot and edit professional video content while wasting as little time and money as possible, you've got to check out our insanely affordable and comprehensive crash course, 14 Day Filmmaker. At the time of recording this video, we've taught over 120,000 students from all over the globe and the results have been incredible. If you've ever wanted somebody to just tell you exactly what you need to 
know with no fluff and no wasted time, then 14 Day Filmmaker is for you. We have step-by-step -step trainings on every essential aspect of content creation, helping you crush YouTube, gain thousands of followers on social media, and even pursue commercial work with brands. And anyone who signs up through the link in the description below will get access to three programs in total. One that focuses on smartphones, one on more professional gear, and a third program that is a crash course on storytelling. Between these three resources, you'll have everything you need to launch your content creation career. Oh yeah, and you also get discounts on Adobe software, sound effect downloads and editing templates. And I also personally host a live weekly Q&A call where we can chat together and get you moving fast. Okay, now back to the video. To finish up, there are a few specs that we still need to touch on, like storage. I recommend you opt for a laptop with a fast, solid state drive for quick boot times and smooth application loading. Unless you're on an extremely tight budget, I would not buy anything with HDD internal storage. That is much slower, you want SSD instead. Aside from the type of storage, when it comes to deciding on how much actual storage space you need, I'd recommend no less than 512 gigabytes, ideally one terabyte or up though. If you go for 512 gigabytes, you're gonna save money, but you're also gonna fill that up pretty quick depending on how much you shoot but like all video editors, your future will be filled with buying external drives for additional storage no matter what. I personally have well over 100 terabytes or 100,000 gigabytes of footage built up over all of my years of shooting and editing video. So it's kind of inevitable, you're gonna be buying these things so you can save money on storage if you want. And if you're curious, my recommendation on external drives would be the Samsung T7 Shields for fast SSD drives, and then larger, more affordable WD drives like this one for back up and archiving all of the footage that you aren't actively editing. Okay, battery life and efficiency. Battery capacities are measured in watt hours. A higher watt hour rating generally translates to longer battery life, but remember manufacturer estimates can be kind of generous, so check user reviews to get a more realistic idea of how long the laptop will last under normal use. And honestly, video editing requires so much power, I wouldn't want you to expect to be able to edit videos for hours and hours on end without needing to plug in to some sort of power. Now, one thing you'll probably notice in the whole PC and Mac debate is due to the more efficient CPU and GPU combos, Macs tend to have significantly better battery life than most PC laptops. And on top of that, the performance of Apple laptops isn't impacted at all whether or not you're connected to power. Historically, a lot of PC laptops have a pretty significant dip in performance power when they're not actually plugged into the wall, which can kind of slow you down a lot. I will say most newer PCs don't have this issue anymore, but it's something that you probably wanna check with any PC you buy. Now, I'm gonna list off both Apple and PC options here at a range of different price points. Before I do that though, I want to very specifically address the Mac versus PC debate for those who are still on the fence. So yes, I personally own a Mac and I'm sure many viewers will see that and immediately sprint to the comments saying, this video might as well have been sponsored by Apple, which trust me, it wasn't. I love my computer, but I also wanna be as unbiased as possible here. Historically, the value of a PC has had a huge emphasis on the ability to customize their specs after purchasing them, upgrading them over time as you grow with the device. This also means if one of those components fails, usually it's a pretty straightforward and affordable fix. From a desktop perspective, this all also means that you can downright build a PC from scratch to fit your liking, which usually comes with huge cost savings, obviously at the expense of having to learn how to build the computer. So to summarize all that, it is a value to price ratio and then the lifelong customization potential. On the flip side, Apple computers have been generally more expensive to get the same amount of specs on paper compared to a PC. So for example, a MacBook with 16 gigabytes of RAM will be more expensive than a PC with 16 gigabytes of RAM. With that being said though, Apple computers usually get a decent real world performance boost compared to their specs due to the fact that Apple has complete control over every aspect of their hardware and their software compared to PC companies that source all of these different elements from different companies. There's just a much larger larger margin for error in that equation. Now that's all nice, but Apple computers also have that massive downside of not being able to customize after purchase. And when something breaks, since everything is permanently fused together inside the computer, even Apple usually doesn't want to fix the computer and instead recommends replacing it because it's probably going to be a similar cost 
to what you need to spend to fix it. With that being said, Apple computers are generally extremely reliable and they don't just break out of the blue. So it's not something you typically need to worry about. Overall, I truly believe that since releasing the M series chips, Apple has vastly increased the power to price ratio that they used to kind of be known for. And since releasing those M series chips, 80 to 90% of the scientific tests being performed measuring these computers has proven that pound per pound, spec per spec, M series chips will typically beat out similarly spec PC computers, primarily when it comes to the real world application of video editing, which again is the primary focus of this video that you're watching. And this especially applies to laptops because they are typically restrained by power limitations of having to work off of a battery. So those extremely efficient M series chips are gonna save the computers a lot of stress. If this was a computer buying guide for software developers, I wouldn't be making all of these same claims, but Apple has put a huge focus on optimizing their computers for video editing and visual creatives, which again is why most YouTubers all use and recommend Apple products without them having to be paid to say that. So yes, as much as I know this will cause the comments to blow up, if I could only choose one for a beginner who has no brand loyalty, I would recommend Apple every time. That being said, if you are loyal to PCs, I'm not saying that PCs are bad and there are tons of really good computers that will allow you to create great content in the PC lineup. Okay, now we can actually talk about recommendations. You might find it ironic that in a 2024 buying guide video, I would recommend buying used, but especially if you are limited on budget, I don't want price to hold you back from creating great content. You can find models that were state of the art last year or even a few years ago for massive discounts and they're still great laptops. So overall, our reputable companies include Dell, HP, Lenovo, Asus, and of course, Apple. Now, not factoring in price at all, I think the best value for your money laptop that you can get for video editing is the M2, yes, not the M3, MacBook Pro with 32 gigabytes of RAM. I've been able to find these online refurbished or used in the $1,500 to $2,500 price range, depending on the screen size you choose. And trust me, this will be a powerhouse for video editors with an incredibly high quality screen and exceptional battery life. And here's why I recommend the M2. The M1 was great, but the M2 had a big performance jump over the M1 since the M1 was the first version Apple ever made for computers. Now the M3 is also extremely impressive, but but it's not anywhere near as big of a jump up from the M2 as the M2 was compared to the M1. So essentially with the M2, you're getting maximum power for maximum cost savings because you aren't buying new fresh off the lot. Now, if you really want to buy a new computer at a similar price, the 15 inch M3 MacBook Air with 24 gigabytes of RAM will also be a powerful video editing machine. You will be totally fine editing 4K and even 6K resolution footage using this computer. It's hard to believe I just recommended a MacBook Air for video editors, but with how far they've come, that M3 chip and that larger 15 inch screen, it's like a perfect grab and go video editing computer. Now, obviously, if you have more money to spend, you will not be disappointed going for any of the new M3 MacBook Pros. I'd recommend optimizing RAM first if you had to configure any of the specs and really just get it to fit your budget and that thing will rip through videos. Now on the PC side, the Dell XPS 15 is a great computer. As far as the specific configuration is concerned, I'd suggest the i9 CPU, the 4060 or higher graphics card, 512 or one one terabyte storage options than the full HD screen. For the price, I really do think you're going to get more from the Apple computers, but this is nonetheless a great deal that you can continue to upgrade over time. Now, I know none of those recommendations were super budget friendly, so let's dial things back and bring it down to the most affordable options that I think are still worth buying. For Macs, this would be the original M1 MacBook Air with eight gigabytes of RAM. You can find this online for around $500 to $600. Now, we're of course breaking the earlier rule we mentioned, which is a minimum of 16 gigabytes of RAM, but at the lower price points, you're going to need to make sacrifices. This will absolutely still edit videos, it just won't be as smooth or as fast as you may like it to be. Now on the PC side, the Asus VivibOOK 16 inch laptop with 12 gigabytes of RAM is actually on sale right now for $449, which is an incredible steal considering you still get that larger 16 inch screen size and a slight jump up in RAM as well compared to the M1 
MacBook Air we just talked about. There you have it though, a comprehensive guide to video editing laptops. Links for all of the computers we mentioned are in the description below. And while you're down there, definitely click on the link to check out 14 Day Filmmaker. If your goal is to produce better content faster than you ever thought possible, this course will teach you everything you need to know to grow your audience on YouTube, shoot commercials for local businesses, build a brand using short form content, and a ton more. Other than that, thanks so much for watching. Hit the subscribe button and I'll see you in the next one.